Number 43, assuming an ideal solution behavior, what is the boiling point of a solution of 115.0 grams of a non-volatile sucrose, which is C12H22O11, and 350.0 grams of water? We need to outline the steps necessary to answer the question, and then we must answer it. Okay, so a couple of things here. I do see that they're throwing us, num- you know, throwing numbers at us. So it's going to be generally a math problem, right? And in this case, we want to find out the boiling point. Now, a boiling point is a certain type of temperature. It is a specific temperature in which a liquid will convert into a gas. It's a physical change. So we're looking for a boiling point. Generally, we write it as like a TB, B for boiling. But now, I notice that we have a solution going on in here, right? We have sucrose being dunked into water. Now, the pure boiling point of water, the solvent, is always 100 degrees Celsius. This is something that you should memorize. Always memorize your boiling points for water, right? There's only one. The pure one is 100. But now, by adding the sucrose in it, it's going to change the boiling point a little bit. Now, there's a huge uh, theory point here, is that when you're starting to add solutes into your solution, if you're adding solids into your liquid medium, the boiling point will always elevate. That means go higher. So whenever we're talking about a boiling point, this is always called the boiling point elevation. And elevation just means that whatever your initial boiling point is, if you're adding solutes, in this case we're adding sugar, to the boiling point, the boiling point is always going to go higher. So if you're not at pure substances, if you're adding stuff to your solvent, which is the water, that boiling point is going to increase. A boiling point will never, ever, ever decrease. So by popular myth, right, adding salt to water to, you know, decrease the time um, for the, you know, the boiling water to boil, obviously, for pasta, right, Um it's not going to lower the boiling point. It increases the boiling point. Boiling point never, ever, 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 ever gets lower. It always goes higher, okay? So we know that already the answer is that the boiling point has to be higher than 100. So maybe on a multiple choice, right, if they give you boiling points that are lower than 100, you cancel them out. Automatically, you know that those aren't the right answers. So just little tips, tips and tricks, you know, if you have like a multiple choice question like this. But now we actually have to find the boiling point. So this is where the math gets involved. What's the formula of finding a boiling point with uh, mass values? Specifically, we have a solution. Well, there's generally only one formula, and that's this one right here. So I'll put this up here. Delta TB, the change. You see that triangle there? This is the change in the boiling point. So change in boiling point will equal KB. Now KB is a constant uh, boiling point constant for your specific solvent. Now they didn't specifically tell us what the KB was here, but I went into a back of a textbook into the appendix values to find out what KB value we're using. And just always know that your KB value is always based off of your solvent. It is never based off of your solution, or sorry, it's never based off of your solute. So right off the bat, they tell us that we have sucrose that is being dunked into water. Always know that your solute is being dunked into your solvent. So the sucrose has to be the solute and the water has to be the solvent. That's why I went to the back of the textbook to find out the KB, the boiling constant, specifically for water, not sucrose. And once again, the boiling point that we're going to be working off of is also the one of the solvent. So everything goes with the solvent here. And the boiling point, the pure boiling point for water is 100 degrees Celsius. 
Okay, the M is the molality. So we're probably going to have to find that out, right? And the I value is called the Vant. It's like a Vant Hoff factor, which we will get into. So we need to outline the steps necessary to answer the question. The thing that we want to find out is the change in the boiling point, because if we can find the change, we could know the exact boiling point. We already have the KB value. That's what I brought um, from the back of the textbook. And the next thing is we need to find out the molality. So letter A, the first step, maybe we'll say step one, is to find or solve for molality. And maybe what I'll do is I'll work alongside here. Here's the start of B. We're going to start answering the question. So let's actually solve for the molality, right? The molality formula is this one up here. Well, I just, I just brought it up. But maybe what I'll do is maybe I could scooch this down now. We have more to work with. Beautiful. So molality of your solution is equal to the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. But however, we are, you know, we were given 115 grams of sucrose. That's the solute. But unfortunately, we need to find the moles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 115.0 grams of the sucrose, C12H, 22.011 and go to the moles of the sucrose. C12H22.011. How do we go from grams to moles? Well, grams to moles of the same substance, we're always going to be dividing by the molar mass, mm, I'll say, right? So we got to go on the periodic table and we got to find out what the molar mass is of sucrose. So I got my periodic table out in front of me. I see that I have 12 carbons. Each uh, carbon on my periodic table is 12.01 plus 22 hydrogens. Each hydrogen is 1.008. And then we have 11 oxygens, which is a flat 16. So let's find out that molar mass. 12 times 12.01 plus 22 times 1.008 plus 11 times 16. And I'm just checking to make sure that I put in all the right numbers. It looks good to me. Whoa. So in this case, maybe I'll move this arrow a little bit. So in this case, we're going to take our 115 grams and we're going to divide it by the 342.296. So 115 divided by that number, I get... Maybe I'll pull this out. Oop, I'll pull this out a little bit. Okay. Looks good to me. Uh, so we have zero. Oh, what happened here? I'm all over the place. Zero point uh, three three six. When I continue doing the math, I will keep this whole number. But just for putting down numbers, we'll put down a couple of decimals. Okay, so now we have the moles of the solute. This is 0 0.336 moles. The next thing we need to do is we need to get the kilograms of the solvent. Ah, they gave us 350.0 grams of H2O, which is water, right? So I need to go from grams to kilograms of H2O. But this one all the way back to basics, right? Grams to kilograms, all you have to do is just divide by a thousand. Similarly, you could take the decimal, move it over to the left uh, three times. So this would be the same as 0 0.350, and we could add that extra zero in there to keep the sig figs, but 0.35, basically. Kilograms. And now we have the kilograms. We can now solve for the molality which just know is just represented by this lowercase m value. So we got lowercase m equals 
It's like a fancy M. Uh, 0 0.336. I will use the whole number on the calculator. Divided by 0 0.3500. Okay. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just put it over here. Molality equals this whole number divided by 0.35. Okay, so we get 0 0.9, very, very close to 9.6. So maybe we'll do 9.6.0. Uh, 9.6.0, well, technically 9.5. We'll do 9.599. But when I, um, when I use the math to plug this in here, I'll use the, the full number here just to make sure we get the most accurate reading. Okay, so we just found out the molality. The molality was 0 0.9599. We found out, or we looked in the back of the textbook to find the KB, right? So that was 0 0.512. The units are Celsius per molality, so that's why molality goes with molality. Um, so we have this number, we have this number. The only thing that we have is basically we need to find out the Van Hoppe factor. So that's step two. Step two is to just identify the, we'll say, I value, which is the Van Hoppe factor. Now, Van Hoppe factor is basically saying how many ions is your solute going to break up into your solvent? Now, we only take a Van Hopt factor for uh, ionic compounds, metals and nonmetals. But however, here's the thing. If you have a covalent compound, you will only have one ion. This C12H22O11 isn't going to break down into just carbon, just hydrogen, and just oxygen. So we have all nonmetals here. This is a covalent compound. And your Van Hopt factor... Your I value for all covalents is always going to be a 1. That means that you're not going to have multiple ions. It's just going to be sugar chilling in the water. And now, since we have everything on this side of the equation, we can solve for the temperature change. So that's step 3. So step 3 is to solve for the delta Tb, the temperature change. So I guess I'll just put it down here. Delta Tb equals the K value, which is 0 0.512, times the molality, which we found out, 0 0.9599, times the I value, which is just 1. So no one cares about this. Anything times by 1 is the same thing. You can you could keep it in there, or you could just times the other two numbers together. So your change in temperature is 0.512, not divided by, times this guy. Ah, and it's a pretty small number. Temperature changes should not be large. So if you get like a temperature change of like 200 or 300, something, something's wrong. Go back, check your math. So this basically is point, uh 0.49, right? Maybe 5, I guess. So 5 degrees Celsius. We know that it's degrees Celsius because the Kb value, one of the Kbs is the Celsius. So when you're dealing with your delta Tbs, you're going to be coming out in Celsius. Now this is the change. The last step is to actually find out the boiling point. So we're going to solve, or, you know, we're just going to, you know, find the actual boiling point. Remember that the pure boiling point was 100 degrees Celsius. And we know, well, maybe we should say 100.0, right? That's the pure, and we said from the beginning that a boiling point will always go higher, never lower. 
So, this is the change. This is how much it increased. So, I just add it to the pure amount. So, 100 plus the change, which is 0 0.5 degrees Celsius, will get me my total boiling point of 100.5 degrees Celsius. Not much of a change, but I mean, there is something. This is the boiling point of the new solution with the sugar in the water. And that's it. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope to be helping you in more problems coming your way. Um, tell your friends, tell your classmates about this channel. Just gets the word out there. Free education for all. Check in the links in the description. We got goodies for you in there. Uh, maybe some study guides. Maybe some, uh, uh, you know, stuff to come. <laughs> Um, but check the links in the description. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.